What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. I just want to focus in on the um, the analysis portion of the slideshow piece. I did the top players in each. Not even top players necessarily, but uh, most untradeable asset, I would say. Probably the best way to word it. Um, you know, and you'll see what that means. And uh, NHL regulars, some got some of these guys have played upwards of 200 games on the show. Others are you know still in the minors or, or juniors or wherever. But um, bottom line is. You know, too often, you know, prospects don't apply to guys in the NHL and take a regular shift that are, you know, you know, college age in many cases. So, without further ado, uh, Anaheim Ducks, Cam Fowler, 22-year-old American defenseman, U.S. Olympian, uh, big things and still really breaking out and emerging defensively, which is good to see. Definitely making progress in his two-way game. The Boston Bruins, Dougie Hamilton, um, you know, 20-year-old defenseman, making progress defensively in his second year. Missed some time with the concussion, but has been very solid um, this season. You know, really, he's a couple years away from being big time, but when he gets there, he'll get there. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres was kind of, I picked Rasmus Ristolainen. Obviously, Gergensens is in the NHL. We know Mikhail Gregorenko can do it at the junior level. Unfortunately, he hasn't had a chance to, to be tested at the AHL level, and his NHL time has been, you know, subpar um, in terms of minutes. But, uh, you know, I like Ristolainen's game. I think he's definitely got a bright future. And out of all those kids, he's the most untradeable one in the organization. The Calgary Flames, I picked uh, Sean Monaghan. Uh, obviously, all the obvious reasons. The closest thing in the or they have in the organization to being a franchise-type center that they've lacked um, for a very, very long time. Carolina Hurricanes, you know, Elias Lindholm's good. Uh, Ryan Murphy's good, but Justin Folk is better. You know, U.S. Olympian, a 21-year-old kid going to 22. He's got a very bright future ahead of him. And, again, U.S. Olympic team. And, uh, theoretically, he could still be in college right now at Minnesota Duluth. Chicago Blackhawks, pretty easy. Brandon Saad, you know, already won a Stanley Cup, 21 years old, only getting better. One of the last cuts, in my opinion, for Team USA. Uh, absolute no-brainer for Colorado. The Avalanche, Nathan McKinnon, number one overall pick, having a very – Awesome rookie year, I should say. I was going very solid, but awesome is probably more appropriate. And, uh, you know, really doing a number of different things with that team. 22-year-old uh, Columbus Blue Jackets center, Ryan Johansson. Uh, he's coming into his own. I loved him when he was in the Portland Winterhawks, and he's really emerging as that uh, number one center. Columbus has always, you know, wanted in their organization. And, you know, big kid and really starting to put it all together. You know, lottery pick a few years ago. Dallas Stars. I was thinking about going with a 22-year-old Tyler Sagan, but he's already been traded once, so to call him untradeable is, uh, is kind of catch-22, so to speak, um, as great a year as he's having. So I'm going with the 18-year-old Valerie Dekushkin, the Russian winger, is playing phenomenal hockey. He has a very bright future, and he's playing with two very solid uh, players in uh, Tyler Sagan and, and Jamie Benn. Detroit Red Wings, I went with the uh, junior sniper, Anthony Mantha. Uh, there are plenty of good young guys in the organization, but uh, I like Mantha's game, and I think he has a ton of upside. I love him at the World Juniors, and uh, you know, I was a fan. I was projecting Mantha to go in the top ten. Uh, if you saw my early mock drafts last year, or my, my you know, mid-May mock drafts, I should say. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a stud. He's lighting up the queue right now. Uh, Edmonton, you know, I guess kind of tempted to say absolutely no one. Everyone on that team could be traded, but I uh, moved New Hopkins, maybe they don't. You know, I was tempted to put Donnell in there, Sam, but obviously he, he's you know still a junior prospect, so you know he's he's good. I love him, but they could still move him. If but I don't I don't see that happening. The Florida Panthers was easy, much the same like uh, Columbus and, and a couple other teams I already mentioned. You know they they have a big uh, center here in Alexander Barkov that has a ton of upside. Will be an amazing player, and uh, you know he's already shown flashes, and you know he, he's awesome. You know he's a very 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 talented. Young man out of Finland. Uh, L.A. King, Tyler Toffoli. I went, I was kind of tempted to go Valentin Zhikov, but uh, I went Toffoli. He's been up on the show. He's producing the playoffs. You know, you know what he is. He's been up and down this season, but it's a very solid player and will continue to score goals in the National Hockey League. Uh, Minnesota, this was easy. Jonas Brodeen, I was, I don't want to say it was easy. I mean, I, I was definitely thinking about, you know, uh, Charlie Coyle, Michael Gramlin, but uh, Brodeen just has it. And, you know, I've been a Jonas Brodeen fan all along, and uh, you know, n no disrespect to, to fans of the show, Charlie Coyle or uh, Jason Zucker, or even, you know, Grandland, any of those guys, but Brodeen has it, and I, I really enjoy watching him play. Definitely a smooth skating defenseman that has uh, a very bright future ahead of him. The Montreal Canadiens, the 20 year old Alex Galchenyuk, he, um, He's awesome. You know, he, he's the center of the future. And he's having a – yeah, I know he's hurt now, but without him, you can just see how much Montreal misses him. Uh, Nashville, his former world junior teammate, uh, Seth Jones. No, what more needs to be said? Really, I mean, he should have been a one pick. 
uh, New Jersey. This was tough. I was tempted to go with Mero. I was tempted with Larson. Um, you know, Mateau kind of was in the back of my head. But I won't read Boucher. I think uh, he has 30, 35 goal upside in the NHL, which I, I can't say for certain. The other guys do. Larson, it came down to realistically Larson. And uh, Jelanos was, was definitely, even though I think Jelanos turned 23. Um, you know, it came down to Boucher and, uh, and Larson. And, you know, I just kind of flipped the coin there. You know, I like Lars, and I think he'll be fine. You know, I think the the minor league the minor league stint is only a brief setback, but uh, I think he'll be he'll be fine. But I like Boucher better. Uh, the New York Islanders, I again tempted Griffin Reiner, but I'm a Ryan Strom. You know, he's, he's lined up the AHL, and I think he's going to be a big piece of their their future going forward. New York Rangers, well, my fellow Masswell, Chris Kreider, having an awesome season. He won't turn 23 until May, so he just gets in. Uh, he, he's definitely an amazing player and someone that will be relied upon to score a lot of goals for the New York Rangers going forward. Um, Ottawa, I want Curtis Lazar. Yeah, I, I, I make a Zabanajad into the back of my head, but I think they'd move Zabanajad before they move Lazar. Um, I really think they like Lazar's game, and I, I can see him in the NHL next season, to be honest with you. Uh, I really, in the last, I was kind of down on him this time last year going, going into the draft, but as the draft got closer, I really... Um, you know, started liking him more and more the more I watched him. I like his game, and I think he has a very bright future with the uh, the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Philly, uh, Sean Couturier, you know, he's awesome. You know, I, I think that's that's a foregone conclusion. I don't think Shen's 22, 23 yet, but uh, I know he's 22 now. Uh, but I own Couturier. You know, I, I loved him to do his, you know, up in Drummondville. He's an amazing player. Uh, the Phoenix Coyotes, um, in terms of untradeable 22 and under players, I went with uh, Oliver Ekman Larson. You know, I, I, I'm 99% sure he's still 22. He's uh, definitely a big part of Phoenix's blue line, and uh, he's going to be a piece of their, their future going forward for a long time. He, he is still 22. be 23 till later in the year. Um, but I, I, it came down to, I liked Connor Murphy a lot, but I went with Oliver Ekman Larson. You know, he's um, he's got it. You know, there's no extra trophies in his future. Pittsburgh, I'm with Ole Mata. You know, young Finnish defenseman, playing phenomenal hockey, teenager in the NHL. What more needs to be said? Uh, San Jose Sharks, I'm with Tomas Hurdle. You know, I know he's hurt now, but anyone that saw that, you know, the four goal game he had, not even the highlight real goal, but, the, you know, all four goal to score four goals at age 19, I uh, just turned 20, is uh, it's definitely an accomplishment that deserves to be celebrated. Uh, St. Louis Blues, Vladimir Tarasenko, he's having a phenomenal year with the Blues. Really, a um, ton of upside. Fell in the draft because of the Russian factor, and he's making teams pay. He's got a, a very, very bright future in, in St. Louis. Uh, Tampa Bay, I went with Jonathan Drouin. Easy decision. You know, he's, he's completely tortured juniors, and, arguably, and he should be in the NHL right now. Toronto, I went with uh, Morgan Riley. You know, I was. Kadri already turned 23, so he's ineligible, and. Uh, you know, I thought about a few other guys, but Morgan Riley's head and shoulders above the rest of that organization, as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Vancouver, I won't bow more of it. You know, easy decision. Washington Capitals. This was a tough one. This was, um, this I, I thought about for a while. Thomas Tom Wilson was one of them I thought about. Uh, I thought about Barakovsky. I thought about, uh, Kuznetsov, but because Kuznetsov hasn't come over yet, you really don't know what the deal with him is. I want Conor Carrick, you know. 19, 20 year old defenseman, NHL. Got to give him the you know benefit of the doubt. And uh, Winnipeg was another one that was tough. Came down to Shifley and Truba, and I picked Truba because I think Truba's game is. Um, I think it's. I'm not saying it's easy to find a first line center, which Shifley has played all, like very well. He's played like you know that that level off uh, the last 20, 25 games, but. Um, to find a defenseman that can play in all situations, much major minutes every night, and uh, you know bring a physicality is uh, is rare. And uh, yeah, I think Jacob Truba does that, and will continue to do that for a long, long time. And uh, he'll, he'll be the, the anchor on more than one U.S. Olympic team, I can guarantee it. Anyway, that's on this episode of the Power Play with CJ, the analysis portion of the top under-22 players in each organization. Stay tuned for episodes for the season and beyond. Later, guys.